Thank God for everything. So you got a biblical word study. And we're studying every single word in the Bible. One word at a time. And uh, today we're doing uh, quicken. Uh, we're on the uh, coming off of being awake, being sober, being alive, uh, being watchful and all of that good stuff. And uh, we just kind of like dovetailed into this quicken and uh, did I write it down here? I didn't write it down here, but I got it up here. And this word quicken, uh, like in the Old Testament, the, the word quicken is, is keya. It just means live, to live, alive, to be alive, <laughs> to have life. That's uh, quicken. Uh, but in the uh, in the New Testament, down here, I think there's one time quicken in the New Testament. Yeah, quicken is uh, 22, 27. And that's zu, zuopoeo, uh, zuopoeo, zuopoeo, whatever you want to say it. That's quicken, to give life, to produce life. And we know that this spirit quickens. And um, and but it, then it's quickened. That we have a couple of quickens and quickenings in in the uh, in the New Testament. Uh, Zupoeo uh, comes from uh, zoon, which is uh, a living beast. When you see like the the, the beast in the in the New Testament, what it's talking about the uh, the good beast, <laughs> not the uh, the Totherion is is the beast, the world ruling system. This is the Zoom. This is the beast that's around the throne. Uh, this is the uh, the good beast, I guess. Uh, that's the living beast. Uh, be Zoom and uh, Poeo means to do or to make, uh, to bring forth. So it's the uh, it, it makes alive, to give life. That's what Zoom Poeo means. And. Um, we can look at these verses. How many verses are there? There's 11 verses. Uh, look at them real quick. For as the Father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, so the Son quickeneth whom he will. So, you know, we know God doesn't love everybody. He's going to make alive who he's going to make alive. Uh, and it's uh, John 6, 63. It's the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life, and that's the K. The life in the Old Testament is K, but in the New Testament, it's Zoe. Uh, that's like the when I when I first saw Zoon, I thought it was going to be life, but the Zoon is the beast. But this is Zoe, Zoe. Uh, they are life, and that uh, in the Old Testament would be Kaya K. In uh, Romans 4, 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. They're talking about Abraham when he brought forth the uh, Isaac uh, uh, out of the dead loins. Uh, that's what it means by quickeneth, to bring something uh, that is not to bring it to life means that something was dead. So uh, Abraham and uh, Sarah, is it Sarah? Yeah, uh, couldn't have uh, children anymore. And uh, that's what that's talking about. Call us those things which be not as though they were. And um, Romans 8, 11, but uh, if the spirit of him that raiseth up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raiseth up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body, bodies by his spirit. That dwelleth in you, so is the spirit that makes alive. And First Corinthians 15, uh, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. And also down in, in 15, uh, thou fool, thou which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. Talking about putting the seed into the ground and it has to die before it can grow. And down in 45, it says, uh, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, Jesus, was made a quickening spirit. And 2 Corinthians 3, 6, who also had made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. 
and we know about the, the, the law and, and, and faith. You know, we don't live uh, by the law now. The law is not done away with, but the, the law kills. It's, it's only by the law that we have sin. <laughs> so if there was no law, there'd be no sin. So the, that's the letter of the law. But the spirit of the law, uh, I got a story. I, got, I won't say it again, but I got out of a ticket using this verse once. <laughs> When I read a stop sign. Uh, let's see. Uh, Galatians 3.21. Uh, is the law then against the promise of God? God for, forbid. For if there had been a law given, which could have given eternal life, given life uh, very righteously, should have been by the law. So he say, there he's saying that, you know, it's the, the, the law kills. It's, it's by faith now. Uh, if there had been a law given, which could have given life very Reverly righteousness should have been by the law, but it's not, it's by faith. And 1 Timothy 6, 13, I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed the good confession. 1 Peter 3, 18, for Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring God us, bring us to God. Uh, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit. And there's resurrection right there. Uh, death in the flesh and quickened by the spirit. I get somebody's out of there so I can, uh, yeah, get that. That's what I like. I like that better. I can see this better. All right. Uh, and then um, the next one down the line here would be this uh, regeneration. There's a bunch. I should break this up, but... Um, I just want to go through these, uh, not not real quick, but I, I want to just 38.24. Yes, uh, that's palingenesia. Mm, you know what? Let me put this up this way, and then we'll do another one of these. 38.24, because there's not enough room there to show you that. There we go, two verses, 38.24. Palingenesia. Palin means again, right? Yeah, palin is again, and we know we know Genesis, Genesis or Genesis. Uh, that's generation, uh, nature, natural, and it comes from uh, Genia, which is a generation or a nation, and that also comes from. Hold on a second. Genos, uh, Genos, okay, which is a kind or kindred. And we're going to get down to ginomai, which means to be or to come to pass. And that's like the haya in the Old Testament. Uh, that I am who am, ginomai. So this is palingenesia. It's regeneration. Uh, Matthew 19, 28. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, Ye also shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And in Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. So you got this washing, that's the luo, I think. A lutron, that's the washing, uh, act of bathing, also uh, uh, c comes from luo, means to wash or to bathe or to cleanse. What's the other one I'm thinking of? Uh, kith, uh, kith, begins with a K. Can't think of it right now. Uh, Cathedral, kith, Cathar, something like that. Anyway, but uh, and then the washing, uh, that's the regeneration, the palingenesia, and the renewing. Uh, we'll look at this one too. Anna, <clears throat> Anna, kinosis, the renewing, a renewal. And that's one of the words. I might as well just put it up here. 342. That's the next word on the list. 342. And also two verses. That's nice. Huh? Anakinosis uh, comes from anakanuo, which means to renew. And we'll put that up there too. Okay, there's two of them verses. So we'll put that up there. Anakanuo. And of course, it comes from ana, which is uh, one of the prefixes. Uh, a by a piece or in the midst of among between and uh, kainos which means new so it's new again to renew 
uh, and there's the synonyms down here. Uh, we'll look, so you got both of them here. You got palingenesia and anakinosis. All right, get that out of there. So, but I wanted to put the 342 and the 341. We'll put them both up here, 341. That's how we study, one word at a time. And like I said, you know, I'm just reading this one verse at a time here, and uh, I'm not putting it in context. I'm sure if we read the verses before it, the verses after it, it would, it would make a whole lot more sense. But uh, basically, we we know uh, what it's talking about. When we read Romans 12 and 2, it says, and, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the renewing of your mind, the anachronosis. And, and we got these two words, conformed and transformed. They, they, there's, there's two different things, and we'll, we'll, we'll see that if we ever get into these words. Uh, conformed is suskematizo. All right, that means to conform to conform oneself uh, to another's pattern, but we don't want to be conformed to that world. We want to be transformed, and that word is metamorpho. So you got these two words, sometimes they, they're used in conjunction with each other, and this means to transfigure or to transform, to change into another form. So this is a little more like, you know, we, we want to be uh, uh, metamorpho uh, and, and a metaschematizo. Those are the two words uh, to transform, to transfer a figure. Uh, so 3339, uh, the metamorpho uh, refers to the permanent state to which a change takes place. And then the 3345, which is the, um, the metaschematizo, refers to the transient condition from which a change happens. Uh, but this other one here, this conformed, this suschematizo, uh, and you'll see some synonyms here. Suschematizo describes what is the essence in character and thus complete or durable, not merely a form or outline. And then the uh, the 4964, the conformed is uh, to shape one thing like another and describes that which is transitory, changeable, and unstable. So that we don't want to be conformed to this world. We don't want to be suschematizo. We want to be morphe. We want to be changed, uh, like the sumorphos that we see in Romans 8 and uh, 28, and Romans 8, 29. So just a little bit on conformed and transformed. Uh, um, what is that? Okay, in Titus 3, 5, uh, we just read because we have the uh, washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. And that's the uh, anachronosis. And this, uh, the other one that we just looked at, uh, which is comes from that, this is the verb of that one. This is anachronuo, which means to renew in 2 Corinthians 4, 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. So we know about the outward man, the inner man. Paul talks about that in Romans, Romans 7 and all that. Uh, so the outward man, will hopefully one day, <laughs> will perish. And as we're alive, hopefully uh, the self goes out and, uh, and faith comes in. So the, the inward man is renewed day by day and Colossians 3.10 and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him and what's that Romans 8 12 we're going to be conformed to the image the likeness of Christ and where is this what's this 1504 that's the icon the image it's the same thing in Romans 8 28 and 29 we're going to be conformed so morphos to the image and the likeness of Christ. So we did these three. Get this out, this out, this out. And we got this on again. This would be uh, 313. 313, I'll do it here. 313, Anna Ganeo. So you can see that Ganeo in there. So it's Anna Ganeo, of course, the prefix Anna 
and the suffix geneo, to beget, to be born. And of course, we went through all these already, geneo, genos, genosis, um, to begat again, be, 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 be born, excuse me, be born again, to produce again. Uh, okay. And so 1 Peter 1, 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope, how? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And the, you know, the succeeding verses tell you a lot more, but we know well, we can't read every chapter in the book today. We're just going to do verse by verse here. And then uh, down in verse 23, he says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So not by corruptible, thartos, thartos, fithero, it's corrupt, that's the verb, but by incorruptible, and that would be a fithartos. You just put the alpha in front of anything, you make it a negative, it's incorruptible. Okay, born again. And then this other, this is resurrection, of course. Uh, Anastasis, there's about 40 verses with Anastasis. We're not going to go through all of those, but we know that's the, the, the main word for resurrection, and it's the feminine noun. Uh, when it talks about the resurrection, it's talking about the resurrection of Jesus. Um, Sadducees say there is no resurrection. Uh, therefore, in the resurrection, whose life shall she be? And they were trying to trick Jesus into... Uh, but he, he told them, you, you do error not knowing the scriptures because uh, in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which was spoken of unto you by God? And I'll put this in context. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. God is not God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. He's, tell, he's telling these Sadducees, what for, man? And they're like, wow, where did he get this? How did he learn this, man? He's just a carpenter. He's a carpenter's son. He's talking about the resurrection of the dead. How could he know these things? We thought we knew, but he's teaching us. Sadducees. And then the same thing in Mark, the Sadducees came to him, they're trying to trip him up. Um, and then Simeon uh, was saw uh, Mary's future, and he was telling her, and Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Uh, telling of Jesus' uh, future. And Simeon was the guy who says, now I can die because I saw <laughs> I saw there was Messiah. And who knows if he died right after that, but he probably did. Um, and then Luke 14 talks about the uh, resurrection of the just. Uh, and then in the Sadducees again, talking about the resurrection. Uh, neither can they die anymore, okay. And then John 5, 29, talking about the resurrection, uh, when the, uh, when everybody either comes forth, and this is also in Daniel, he says, and, and shall come forth, excuse me, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done easel, evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So you tell him, how long is eternal life? Is as long as is eternal damnation. How long is eternal damnation? As long as eternal life. And that's the resurrection. And Martha knew that there was a resurrection at the last day. Um, and I'm, I'm more into believing that now that there's a sleep before the resurrection. Uh, so we, we I, I believe that when we, we die, we don't go right to heaven or hell. We, we sleep until the end. And then it could be a minute, it could be a thousand years, but you're not going to know once you wake up how long it's been. So you can say that, you know, once you die, you're going one way or the other. But we don't want to be in that second death. And that talks about in Jude and uh, 
in those places. Uh, you know, we all die once. Uh, we don't want to be in that second death. Uh, Martha said, you know, I, I know that he'll rise again. You're talking about her brother, uh, who, whom Jesus rose from the dead. Lazarus, he'll come in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. So how could he say I'm the feminine resurrection? He says, I am the resurrection and, and the life. And he that believeth in me, though he were dead, uh, yet shall he live. So we could be dead uh, even while we're alive. I was dead. Uh, I was in sin. Um, well, we're talking about the resurrection. And we know what the resurrection is. The resurrection is, is not past. And then... Um, was these guys that was talking about the resurrection is passed already. Um, Hymenaeus and Philetus, right? Um, spoke of the resurrection of Christ. Um, he, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. And you're going back to the Old Testament with that one. Um, and he taught the people the resurrection from the dead. Uh, then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, what shall this babbler say? All these guys walking around with their robes and their high and mighty with their noses up in the air. And others said, he seemed to be a set us forth of strange gods because he preaches unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Let's go talk to this guy. See what he's talking about. <laughs> they, they, these people got nothing to do all day. They were standing around and philosophy, you know, and they were talking about Paul and they, they wanted to see what he had to say. And they took him and brought him to Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine is, whereof thou speakest? Uh, for thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean, which is good. They, they sit around philosophizing, they want to learn new things. And that's good for them. Well, but they had all these gods out there and they were, they were worshiping all of them. Well, not worshiping them, but just saying, okay, uh, give me a God. I'll believe in him too, you know? And these guys, for the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but to tell or to hear some new things. So they just sat around yapping, you know? And then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, you men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. I think that's Desi de Monisteros. Too superstitious. Yeah, Desi de Monisteros. Uh, comes from a lot of things. So Desi, Delios, fearful, timid. And uh, Daemon is a devil or a goddess. Uh, Desi de Monisteros. Too superstitious, he says, because as, as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. So they had altars for everybody. And then if there was a God that they didn't know about, they said, okay, let's put an altar up for the unknown God. Uh, wherefore, where, therefore, you ignorantly worship him, I declare unto you. So they, they knew all about all these other gods, but they didn't know about Jesus. And he says, I'm declaring Jesus to you now. So you could take down that unknown God picture and all these other gods and put this one up there. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshiped with men's hands as though he needeth anything, seeing he liveth, he giveth to all life and breath and all things. And he hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. There's predestination right there. The times before appointed, 43, pro tasso, appoint before, pro and tasso, determined, horizo is determined. So you can say pro horizo, so he's predetermined. But here they put, they put horizo and pro tasso. So that's like predestination right there. Uh, the bounds of their habitation. Orothesia, the bound. And that's what the predestination is all about. It's a boundary, a boundary line. Uh, 
uh, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from any one of us. Uh, and he's preaching to the Athenians, uh, these so-called uh, Stoics and Epicureans and, and people that have nothing to do all day but sit around and yap, 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 yap about what they know, what they think they know. And he came in there and he blew their mind. He, they, they, they said to him, he's turning the world upside down. <laughs> with what he's saying imagine that he's turning the world upside down what are we gonna do and when they heard of the resurrection of the dead some mocked and others says we will hear ye again on this matter so they still wanted to hear him all right that's further down in verse 32 could have read down to the whole thing but you get it um and then Paul, he was he was having trouble. Uh, they were going to tear him apart, man. The Sadducees and the Pharisees, uh, the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees didn't even like each other. And they were both going after Paul. Uh, but when Paul perceived that the one part was Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he's cried out in the council. He says, man and brethren, I'm a Pharisee, a son of a Pharisee of the hope and resurrection of the dead. I am called into question. And that right away, the, the Sadducees are saying, we still don't like you, but the Pharisees are saying, whoa, 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 let's listen to this guy. So, and, and when he said so, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. So first, they were all uh, together, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, wanted to tear him apart. But when Paul said that, he got the Pharisees and the Sadducees against each other. So they were divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. And there arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees' part rose and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man, but if a spirit of an angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. So right away he had the Pharisees on his side. And when, when there arose a great dissension, the chief captain, fearing lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them, commanded the soldiers to go down and to take him by force from among them and to bring him to the castle. And that night, uh, following the, the Lord, stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for thou, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so thou must also bear witness me in Rome. Whew. So Paul had such confidence, such faith uh, that nothing was going to happen to him. And these people wanted to tear him apart. But uh, Jesus says, don't worry, you got to go to Rome. Get you away from these people. That's the resurrection. Well, the resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust, Acts 24. Uh, and he was he, he, every time he talked about it, the, the, the touching the resurrection, because the, the, the Pharisees believed in the resurrection. And that's what saved him a lot of times when he was talking to these people. Uh, that Christ should suffer and that uh, he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And well, there's a lot of these verses. Um, like the resurrection. Uh, 15, 1 Corinthians 15. I love that chapter. Um, now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. So everything's in vain. And then 21, he says, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. So they're talking about Adam and Christ. Uh, and 42, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, raised in incorruption. We saw that already. Uh, and Philippians 3.10, it's a great verse. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and more importantly, the fellowship of his sufferings. Because he says, if you want to be my disciple, you got to deny yourself, take up the cross, and follow me. So there's the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. So we'll be to be conformed in the likeness of him. And we have to follow him. And where do we, where do we follow him to? The cross. All right. Um, so all right. These, this is talking about these guys here, Hymenaeus and Philetus, right? Say so They said the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. But we know the resurrection 
It's not. I can't think of the one word they were using for resurrection. That's the ma masculine word for resurrection. It's um, I think it's Igiro, but I can't think of it right now. But that's the masculine resurrection. And that's what these guys were talking about. Uh, they say, yeah, it happened already. No, it's 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 every day and uh, we will be in part of that resurrection. Um, let me see. Um, we got first Peter 113. We read that already about blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again, born again into a lively hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And the same thing we read in 321, we read that. Um, and in Re Revelation 25, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished to kill you. And this is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And we're in that now. We're in the Kilia now. We're reigning with him now. This isn't oh, this isn't something that's going to happen oh, after this. Uh, you know, there is no thousand year reign on earth. This Kilia, this thousand years is talking about now uh from from when when peter stood up and said this is that that was spoken of by the prophet joel this is the the, the, the killer and a thousand years we know is at least two thousand years and we don't want to be part of that second debt that's twice dead that's the what jude talks about twice dead twice dead yeah, these are these are vessels of wrath. He says these are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about by winds. Trees whose fruit withered, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. So that's the second death, and that's uh, vessels of wrath, fitted to destruction. So are those the ones that God loves? No, He doesn't love them. He loves the vessels of mercy before prepared to glory. And this one word here, the last one is anistame. It means to arise. I think we looked at that a little bit last time. Did I see uh, 386? What's 386? Hold on, 386 in my notes. Yeah, that's the resurrection. Okay. All right. Anastasis, yeah. I got the wrong number in my notes. I'm sorry. So this is Arise, Anna, and of course, Histame. That's a popular uh, suffix there. Stand, Histame, the cause to make the stand. So Anna, Histame, Arise, the cause to rise up. And there's over 111 verses here, so we're not going to go through all of these, but if you got your word study concordance, you can look at all these verses at your leisure. And he arose, he rose. So this is basically the verb talking about rising, rise up. So there's going to be a lot of stuff here. Uh, I'm not going to get into all of this. Um, you see what's down here. Arise is another priest. Yeah, just a verb for arise, or to rise up. All right. So I'm going to take this out of here. And now we're getting to the drunkenness here. Huh? All right. See what we got left here. Oh, born again. I did that. Did I do this? Um, born again. We know the word for uh, again is uh, from above. It's anathen, uh, from above. So born from above. So that's the, uh, that's that's the, what do you call it? Uh, anno is above or upward. And then. Uh, and that's born again. So let me look at these verses here real quick. There's only three of them. Um, John 3, 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then uh, he's talking to, uh, what's his name here? Uh, Gamaliel, uh, what was his name? Oh, Nicodemus? Yeah, Nicodemus. Uh, Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Um, you know, years ago, I could understand asking that question, but this guy's supposed to be a man of the law, you know, Nicodemus. 
And Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So it is born again is a, is a spiritual thing. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listed, it goes where it wants to, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but you can't tell where it's coming from. Or where, or where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto them, How can these things be? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Are thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto you, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? So they just left them alone after that. <laughs> Get out of here. Oh, yeah, yeah. So first Peter 123, this is the being being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And then this other one here is uh, begotten. There's a lot of verses on begotten. Uh, you can go back to the Old Testament and find all kinds of stuff on begotten, who begot this, begot that, begot that. Um, but this one here in the New Testament starts uh, uh, John 1, 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And that's where we get our name from, grace and truth. But this begotten is monogenes. Mono, you, you can understand what that is. Mono means only or alone or one. And of course, genia or genomai, which means to be. And it's only begotten, only child, um, only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he who of whom I spoke. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me, and of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declare him. So the only begotten, not his one and only. You see John 3, 16 in one of these NIV Bibles, it says his one and only son. It's not his one and only son. As we know, Israel is his firstborn. But his only begotten, the monogenes, that's, uh, that's Jesus. Jesus Christ, that's John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, not his one and only. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but hath everlasting life. And he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Um, uh, he's begotten. Let me see if I can just put up only begotten. Only begotten. And cut out some of these begottens here. Yeah, it's only six of those there. Uh, only begotten son, only begotten son, only begotten son. Uh, Eleven seventeen Hebrews by faith Abraham when he was tried offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Uh, so that was was Abraham's. Even though Isaac, uh, Ishmael was his son, he's calling Isaac his only begotten son. Uh, and first John four nine in this was manifested the love of God toward us because that he sent because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. And there's a big difference between the only begotten uh, and one and only. Uh, that's a bad translation. One and only because, you know, it's not his one and only son. Jesus, is, uh, he called Israel my firstborn. Right. And then I got into be sober and watch. Okay, um, let me see where I want to go with this here. Um, in my notes, um, 
Shakur, that's drunken. Uh, I don't know. I think we might have looked at some of these already. Uh, 3525 is Nepho. Let me see if I got this in the book. Nepho. No, oh, that's meth. That's meth. And this is Theological Dictionary 4. I think we might have went through this. I might have put this in the back of 4. 9.36. Oh, I got a tab in here. Hold on. Let me go back here. 4. 9.36. Okay. Uh, you got Nepho. And you got uh, Nephelios to be sober, to be vigilant. So that comes from this 35.25. And why do I have this here? 15.94. Oh, it's Ek Nepho. So it's part of it. And it's awake. So you see, see, it's all the same thing. Sober, vigilant, awake. So we'll look at that real quick here. Part of this uh, quicken resurrection awake, you know, be, be on your toes here. So 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 34, awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. So we got to give up that sin, man, whatever it is. We got to sin not. He said, go and sin no more. Lest something else worse happens to you. So, you know, you, you we, we think, you know, well, as long as we're in his body, we, we can't not sin. Yeah, well, you can and you should. I mean, that's what we're, we're striving for, to, to, to sin not. And, um, and it's possible. I believe it is possible to sin not. <clears throat> Wow, I got a good spasm there. Okay, um, the concept which underlies this verb nepho, to be sober, and the whole word group is it's formally uh, negative, uh, but in the in the it is the opposite of uh, intoxication, and we're going to look at that uh, when we look at drunkenness and and things, and that's thirty one, eighty four. So that's the next page. This drunken 3184 methuo, meth, sounds familiar, huh? Methuo, to be drunken. Uh, so it's the opposite of, of what we're looking at now. A methe, drunkenness. And you got all the synonyms down here. Look at all these synonyms. Methe, uh, protos is banqueting. We're going to look at that. There's only one verse. Uh, we got, um, come on, uh, ono. Lugia, uh, excess of wine, one time in the bottle, drunkenness. And we got uh, com comos, which is reveling or rioting uh, to carouse. Did that, been there, done that. Uh, Kime, okay. And then also uh, creipele, cre surfeiting. That's the giddiness and headache caused by drinking wine to excess one time. So most of these are one time in the Bible and we'll run across them. I got them down here somewhere, uh, but we're gonna get into that. Uh, the drunken part, uh, after we finish this sober thing, we'll get the sober out of the way here. So, and, uh, oh, oh man, that was a good one. Um, let me see if we got anything here in uh, holding no wine. Um, uh, in the New Testament, the word is used only in a figurative sense, and even here it is noteworthy that sense, too, does not occur. Equation of spiritual endowment with something the anesthetic intoxication might seem natural to outsiders. Why do I have Acts 2, Acts 2.12? Let me see what Acts 2.12 is. Acts 2, 12, 12, 12. Here we go. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what mean is this? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. Okay, so that was the mocking that they gave to Peter when everybody started talking in tongues and, tongues and all that stuff. He says, but Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, you men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken, 
as you suppose, seeing that is the third hour of the day. And what's the third hour of the day? It's 9 a.m. But this is that which was spoken of by Joel. I just mentioned that. And it shall come to pass that in the last days, and the last days started when, when Peter was standing up talking about this. And that's 2,000 years ago. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And then you go back to Joel, and you can read all that stuff that he was talking about. But he says, they're not drunken. And Ephesians 5, 18. Uh, I don't know why they're putting these verses here, but I've got to go look at them. Ephesians 5, 18. Uh, talking about, uh, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's how we pray. And we, sh we could be singing and s singing and doing spiritual songs, but this... Uh, uh, those two verses in there. So we're not to be drunk with wine, and we'll get into the drunkenness and all that stuff, but this is the opposite. When you're talking about being sober, you also have to talk about uh, being drunk. Uh, but it's it's quite misleading. So there, is, there is thus no reasoning for uh, relativizing or a paradoxical estimation of soberness. Uh, it could be sober uh, spiritually, it could be sober uh, literally, uh, the five passages in which the word is used make it clear from the immediate context that nephos consists in acknowledgement of the reality given with God's revelation. And there's a lot here to this. Uh, and in discharge of the resultant ministry by worship, hope, love, and warfare. Uh, the basis of the obviously uniform use in the New Testament is the usage established by the spirit, not the letter of the Old Testament. And we, we can get into that too. But uh, in 1 Thessalonians 5.5, 5, actually, 5.5, 5, he says, uh, you are children of light, the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. So you got the sleep in here. I think we covered sleep. Uh, the the kethudo, uh, we might have got into this a little bit. Uh, the fall asleep, uh, yeah, we did, because I remember this. There's no word for this. There's no number for this. Kethudo, to fall asleep. So we're not to sleep, and it's talking about spiritual stuff. Um, sleep as others do, let us, let us watch. We looked at this. Uh, Gregorio, to watch, to be wakeful, to be vigilant. It's all part of this. And be sober, which is what we're looking at now. That's nepho. Uh, yes, nepho. Nepho, be sober, to watch. And uh, therefore, let us uh, not sleep. Uh, in the, <laughs> Excuse me. Let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that are drunken, are drunken in the night. And it could be physical drunkenness, but it could be spiritual drunkenness too. But let us who are of the day uh, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. And for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. So we can, we can be sleep. <laughs> you know, you got to sleep. Uh, so that's talking about uh, physical wakeness and physical sleep. Gregorio and a cathudo, wake or sleep. So you got your opposites right there. Um, um, and 2 Timothy 4.5. Excuse me. Let us, but but watch, thou in all th all things. Excuse me. Endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and make proof of thy ministry. That's uh, he's given the admonitions to the to the so-called uh, future pastors of the church, the bishops. So uh, 
is giving them the direction. And then first Peter 1 13, wherefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. First Peter 4 7, uh, but the end of all things is at, is at hand. <laughs> 2000 years ago, ago, he said this, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. What's that word? Sober. Uh, sober, 49.93, did we look at this? Yeah. Sophroneo. Sophroneo, to be in the right mind. Okay, to be sober. Let me, 49.93, did I look at this? 49.93. 93, to be sober. And this is the guy who was in, the, in his right mind after he was in the... The, the cemetery cutting himself and doing all this stuff and he was supposedly possessed with the devil he had the legion sitting in at jesus's feet and he was in his right mind so jesus drove self out of him sophroneo so he became in his to be in his right mind so he was sane in his right mind soberly to think soberly according to God who dealt every man in the measure of faith. Uh, for whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. Young men likewise exhort to be sober minded. And but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. So that was a quickie on Sophronia. I don't know why I didn't have that on my list, but I didn't. And um, 1 Peter 5, 8, uh, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. And he told Peter, he says, he walks around, he wants to sift you as whatever, he's going to sift you. And that's what the devil does, he walks around. Be vigilant, that's the Gregoruo. Yeah, that's the Gregoruo, be vigilant. The devil's out there, man. Uh, and this is 3524. This is nephalos, sober, temperate, vigilant. Uh, and he's again telling a bishop, uh, 1 Timothy 3, a bishop must then be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, even so must their wives be graves, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. So he's talking about the bishop or the head of the church and uh, whoever he's married to. They all got to be the same, you know. And in Titus, he tells them that the, the, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. So they ought to be grave. What's grave? Semnos. Grave, honest, comes from sebomai, which means to worship, to be devout, to be religious, to revere. Semnos, temperate, is sofran, uh, sober, temperate, discreet. Comes from sozo, which means to save or to make whole. And friend, which means to, of understanding, to, to, to have a whole understanding, to have a sane understanding. That's temperance and sound in faith, Shugiano, to be sound, to be whole. And it comes, I think that comes from holy too, to be sound, to be well. Hugies is whole or sound. Sound in faith, in pistis. Uh, and of course, agape, every time you see charity, it's agape, which is love. Uh, we know what love is. And patience. Hupomone, and that's the patience we have toward each other with ourselves. And, uh, and the other one is the, uh, the patience that God has for us. And that's, oh man, oh God. Whew. Um, let me see. Uh, for the continuation of the New Testament use of the period was followed, da, 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 da. and then holding no wine, 3524. Uh, the word is, is distinguished from the verb 
mainly by the fact that in, in the first instance it is used only of materials. La da 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 da. Um, the word then kind of there. Okay. It's a lot of little stuff down here I can't get into. I can't read all of it. The chief will follow. So uh, in the New Testament, the, the term occurs only amongst the uh, requirements uh, for the for the pastor, for the bishop. And we talked about that. First Timothy 3 2, First Timothy 3 11. We saw that already. So you've got to be sober. Uh, the lists are not so systematic that one is justified in asking why Nephilios is left out of uh, 1 Timothy 3.8 or Titus 2.3. On the other hand, it may be asked whether they are so loose that one is to regard uh, different members of the same series as wholly equivalent in meaning. And he goes on, and then 1594, to become sober. We looked at that. So that's good. That was, that was a quickie on sober, being sober. And you can look at that in your theological dictionary if you got one. Uh, if you can't afford one, I'll help you get it. And it's a great set of books, Theological Dictionary of the New Testament, volume four. So getting back to uh, Mephe here, uh, the drunkenness I think we're going to get into now here. Uh, yeah, that's the next thing on our list. Mephe. And then we got banquetings, rioting, reveling, surfeiting. Woo! Get into all that stuff. Uh, backbiters, liars, hateful, pleasures, boasters, proud, injurious. You know, getting into all that good stuff. Turn this off here. I left it on. I'm sorry. All right. Very distracting. Turn that off. Thank you, God. All right. Uh, so let me see what my notes say. And then we'll dip into. I got look at all this. You can't look at this drunkenness. Look at all these verses for drunkenness. Uh, I got drunk, drunkard, drunkards, drinkers, drink. <sighs> Drunk, drink, drunkard, drunkenness, temperance, intemperate, uh, drinkers. And then we got the wine, uh, shaka means to drink, and that's drunken in the Old Testament. And there's three words for drunk in the Old Testament. There's more than that, but the three that I picked out were right here. So um, let's get back into this New Testament thing here to be drunk, drinking. And we'll look these words up one at a time. In the old OLB here, 3182, 3182 is drunken, Bethusco. Right? Is that the first one on the list? No, the first one is Methe, and that's 3178. So we'll start with the what the book has here. Theological Dictionary, uh, volume four, page 545, 3178, 3178 is drunkenness and that's methe drunkenness intoxication drunkenness all right so uh luke 21 34 and take heed to yourselves lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting that's another word we're going to look at surfeiting i think it's one time in the bible anyway so we'll look at it real quick here surfeiting is uh criapale, surfeiting the giddiness or the headache caused by drinking wine uh, in excess, and these are all the synonyms: methe, poto, drinking, carousing, debauchery, drunkenness. I mean, we can get lost on this forever. There's so many different ways to go with this, and there's a lot of verses that have to do with uh, the synonymous words for this. But uh, crapale, crapale, drunkenness, the cares of this, of this life. Uh, so that the day come upon you unawares. What day? <laughs> He's talking about Luke 21. He's talking about the last day here. So Romans 13, 13, let us walk honestly as in the day. And that's what we got to walk in the daytime. We got to be sober, not in the daytime, in the nighttime, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. And I'm sure I got all these words down here. Rioting uh, is... Uh, comos, all right, 
uh, a nocturnal and riotous possession of half drunken and frolicsome fellows who after supper parade through the streets with torches and music in honor of Bacchus or some other deity and sing and play before houses of male and female friends and stews generally of feasts and drinking parties that are protracted till late at night and indulge in revelry. Hey, can anybody uh, identify with that? I can. Uh, been there, done that. And then Kime. So that's one time in the Bible. No, it's three times. I'm sorry. 20, 2970. You want to look at it real quick? 2970. 70. So we don't have to look at it later. So, all right. <laughs> look at it. Oh, man. We'll just go crazy looking at all these words. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have told you also in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So we got to stop doing that stuff. I know I did. Thank God. Like I said, been there, done that. Uh, for the, the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable adulteries. Wow. Let me look at these words. I got them all down here, but we're going to look at them real quick. Uh, uh, we walked in lasciviousness is asalgia, lasciviousness, wantonness, unbridled lust, excess, licentiousness, Lasciviousness. There's nine verses to one with this. Aselgia uh, and Selges is of uncertain derivation, but apparently meaning continent. So there's no word Selges. You can go nuts looking for this word. You're not going to find it. Aselgia. And then lusts. We know what lust is. That's epithumia, to breathe hard after something, the desire, craving to desire for something that's forbidden and uh, look at all the verse 38 there verses there we can go nuts with all of these uh, excess of wine is one time in the bible that's this oino flugia oinos is wine right and who's calling my uncle my uncle james Nuro. uh i gotta take this hold on a second uncle james Okay, he hung up. I don't know why he's calling. Maybe he's pocket calling me. But he's uh, my elderly uncle. He's like 92, 93 years old. I just wondering what's up. Okay. Uh, Oino Fuglia. He's calling again. Excess of wine. It's one time and we're looking at it now. And then uh, revelings, which we're looking at now. That's Comos. Banquetings. Potos. Uh, potan, potos, banqueting, one time in the Bible, carousing, drinking, comes from uh, pino, which is to drink or to, to, to get drunk of, to drink, pino, and we'll look at that a little bit, I got a bunch of verses on that, pino, is wine actually, uh, an abominable idolatries, athemitos, idolatries, of course, idololatria, we know that one, we've heard it a hundred times. Ido uh, is idol, and lolatria is to, to, to do service, to serve what you see. So you uh, serve what you see, and that's idolatry. All right, um, envyings, we can look up all these words. For Thanos, murders, Phonos, drunkenness, revelings, we just looked at. So, and this is the drunkenness, 3178. And then uh, Methuo uh, is 3184. 3184, my uncle keeps calling me here for some reason and he's not picking up. Um, drunken, okay. Uh, talking about the the parable here, Matthew twenty four forty nine, uh, and shall smite and begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken, uh, and that's what happens. 
when when he goes away, when the master goes away, uh, this is what will happen. And then um, in John two ten, he talks about the the wine that was at the uh, at the feast. He says, and he said unto them, every man at the beginning to set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. So when Jesus turned the water into wine, it was better wine than what they had first put out. Uh, and then um, Acts 2.15, uh, for these are not drunken, as you suppose, Peter telling them, seeing it is uh, the third hour of the day. Um, another is drunken, one is hungry, another is drunken. Uh, Paul's admonishing these guys for eating at the Agape Love Feast when they should have uh, saved some for the poor. And he says, you, you're eating, you, sh you should eat before you come here. For in eating, everyone taketh before uh other in his own supper and one is hungry and another is drunken you come in here drunken man that's you all how could you do that and of course first thessalonians 5 7 we read already you're drunken in the night uh and in revelation 17 2 uh with whom the kings talking about babylon within with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication talking about the beast and uh, the woman that sits on the beast with the wine. And there's the word wine, oinos, that's the other word for wine, of her what? Fornication. Pornia. Pornos, illicit sexual intercourse. They're all getting drunk. That's what's happening today with these people. All getting drunk. Come out of her, my people. Come out of her. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. <clears throat> and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was written a name, Mystery, Babylon the Great, mother of harlots and ad, abominations, abomination, ab, abominations of the earth. Excuse me. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore did thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carried her, which had the seven heads and the ten horns. The beast which thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. And we know about all of these words. We know about who the beast was, the seven heads, the ten horns, uh, the, the ten northern tribes, and the seven heads are the the, the, the the mountains on which the woman sits, and that's not Rome. It's the Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome, and every other head uh, where, where it ruled from, and that's the beast, and that's the world ruling system. Uh, and it, it will ascend out of the bottomless pit. And that's the uh, abusos. That's the place of no knowledge. Uh, it's not a bottomless pit. <laughs> and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they beheld the beast that was and is not and yet is. You know, you got to think about the time when, when John was writing this. Uh, the was and is not and yet is. Uh, talking about the the success in, of, of the beast, the Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome. And here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. And we know the mountain is a capital city, and it's not the seven hills of Rome. Uh, these are seven kings. Five are fallen. One is. So the one is is the Rome. This is what, what was ruling in the day when John was writing this. That's Rome. So you got Babylon, Persia, Greece, and then Rome. Uh, and the five, you could say five are fallen. What, what are the five before this one? Well, you can go back and say, what was, what was the capital city? Well, you can go back to the Garden of Eden. You could say that. And then Babel, you know, was another one. And that as they come along, each, each beast, each world ruling system is the, the, the seven mountains. One of them is a mountain. Uh, and that's a head. 
five are falling. One is all you have to know about is the one that is. And the one that is is the Rome that he's talking about now. And the other is not yet come. So whatever comes after Rome, uh, Roman Catholicism. Oh, man, I'm getting these spasms. Man, man. And, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is of the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. So we're into this already. We're probably into the seventh or eighth ruling system, whatever it is, you know, whoever's ruling on the earth, that's the world ruling system. And that's the beast. Uh, it's one of the mountains. So whatever the mountain is today, it's either the seventh or the eighth. Uh, maybe we're waiting for another one. I don't know. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. And these have one mind and shall give their power and strength over to the beast. And who was it that gave their power and their strength over to the beast? What, in, the, in, in Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus 26, God says to Israel, uh, if you obey me, you'll have all this power and all this strength. Exousia and dunamis, you will have it. Uh, but if you don't obey me, uh, I will give away your power and your strength. So that's what these these are the ten northern tribes. These are the, uh, this is Israel here. They have one mind, and they shall give their power and strength over to the beast. And they shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. He won't totally destroy them, but he shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords, king of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the Hua sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And waters are peoples. So, and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the Hua, and we hate the Hua, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So they're going to turn on her. They're with her now. They're giving their, their power and their strength over to this beast, and they're going to turn on her, and, and ultimately uh, they, they will help in destroying this beast. For God had put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. And by any other name, it's Babylon. So whenever you're talking about the world ruling system, whether it's America, whether it's uh, the Vatican, whether it's uh, Mecca, or whether it's anybody else, it's Babylon. It's simple as that. So that was a quickie on... Uh, the beasts, the world ruling system, the heads, the mountains, giving the power and the strength over to the beast and ultimately turning on the beast and they will kill the beast. And this is uh, what we got to look forward to. Thank God he's in charge. Matthew 3183 is the next one. 3183. 183. You know what time it is here. <clears throat> I can't see. All right. Um, First Corinthians 5.11. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetousness or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner, would such an one know not to eat? A lot of times when I read this, I... Or heard it, I think I thought it was no, K N O W. It's not, it's no. With such a one, no, don't eat. Don't eat with them. Um, let me look at these words here. I can't I can't get away without looking at these words. Um a fornicator. Pornos again, fornicator who manga, a man who prostitutes his body, a woman who probably uh, uh, covetousness, covetous, pleonectes, covetous, comes from pleon, uh, from pleon, which means more or many, and echo, I think, yeah, uh, echo, yeah, to hold or to have, so you're holding on to that, covetousness, uh, and idolatry, of course, we looked at that already, that's idololatria, yeah, yeah, a rela, I haven't seen that one. Uh, Loideros, a reveler, a revealed mischief. Uh, 3060. 3060. Uh, no thieves, <laughs> no covetousness, no drunkards, no revelers, 
no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. That's the next verse. So it's in both of these. All right, good. 30, 60. And then um, the revelers, no extortioners, harpax, extortioner, uh, comes from harpazo, to catch up, to take by force, to catch up, to seize, to carry off. And of course, comes from arrow, which uh, means to uh, to take for oneself or to choose. Yeah, to choose. Heromai, the heresy. We get the word heresy from that to to make up your own doctrine. Extortionary revenue. Seven twenty-seven. Look at it real quick. This is what I do. I look at these words one word at a time. Um, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Luke eighteen eleven. The Pharisees stood and prayed thus with themselves with himself saying god i thank thee they i'm not i am not as one of the other men are extortioners unjust adulterers so this guy was you know self-righteous here this this publican and you can look at all these words we got to look at all these words fornicator coverages extortioners adulterers <sighs> railer drunkard uh, so these are all good words and that's the 727 as ravening uh extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of god so we got to come out of that stuff, man, whatever it is. Oh, and then 3182 is a part of this. 3182. I'm going through this real quick for you guys, but uh, you get what I mean. This is how we look at one third, of, one word at a time. We get the, uh, the, 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 the word study concordance and boom, this is what you find in your word study concordance when you look up these numbers. Luke 12, 45, but, and if that servant saying is odd, my list, so this is the same thing that's in Matthew point when he's talking about the, the, the servant, the, the, that's, that's hanging out when the Lord goes away and he takes over the house and he, he does what he's not supposed to be doing. But, and if the, that servant saying is odd, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to beat the men's servants and maidens and to eat, and to drink and to be drunken. So that's what happens when we think nobody's watching. <laughs> to eat, drink, and be drunken. Eat, drink, that's the point of, okay, pino, and to be drunken. This is what we're looking at now. Methusco, to be drunken, to intoxicate, to, to become drunk, to be drunken. Ephesians 5.18, we read that. And be, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Uh, for they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. But we're not going to do that. And then Pino, I think that was the word with the, with the 4095. Look at that real quick. 4095. Yeah, these are all 60 some odd verses. Yeah, talking about drink, 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 drinking. Uh, and it's not all about being drunk, but you can drink the cup. We got to drink the cup. All right. Uh, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into a cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Revelation 14, 10. Revelation 16, 10. For they have shed the blood of saints and the prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And that's the blood without mixture. That's what they're going to get. And 18 and 3, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of a fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich uh, through the abundance of, of delicacies. And that's what's happening right now. That's what's going on today. Uh, everybody's getting drunk together. And they all hold hands. I'm trying to get this essay. Hold on. Yes, delicacies, strenos, delicacy, excess of strength, which longs to break forth, luxury, eager desire, comes from stereos, which is strong, firm, okay, steadfast, so they're in a strain. And I wanted to read a lot of this stuff, but I just like, I just went through a real quick just did it like a, 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 a word study without reading everything on it because there's so much here to read on this. Uh, methe, methuo, methuso, methuscomai. Um, and um, 
it's one, two, three, four. There's only four four pages, believe it or not. All of the stuff we just looked at, it only takes up four pages. But uh, there's a lot of stuff in there. And we'll get into it uh, uh, some other time. He says, uh, Methuo and Methuskomai are mostly used in literature in the New Testament for to be drunk or to get drunk. Methuskomai is used with no ethical or religious judgment in John 2.10, in connection with the the rule uh, that the poorer wine is served only when the guests have drunk well, but we know that he, he did uh, turn the water into wine and it was better. In 1 Thessalonians 5.6, Paul admonishes the community not to live indifferently in all kinds of vices, uh, but with the sense of imminence of the parousia, and that's the coming. Uh, I looked this up, 39.52, that's the parousia. And that's the coming, Perusia, coming presence. And we'll, that's what we're waiting for, the, the coming. Uh, and it's not the uh, the first advent, it's the second advent. Uh, to be awake in a sanctified life, to fill out the picture. He demands sobriety and issues a special warning against the tension, which might easily be caused by eschatological expectation. Uh, so this twofold demand is based on the fact that Christians live in the dawn of a new era, which has arrived with the resurrection of Jesus. They live in the day of Christ so that what belongs to the night must be alien to them. In this connection, he interposes in verse seven an appeal to the common fact of experience of those who are drunk are drunk in the night. And we saw all those verses talking about when drunk and being drunk in the night. Um, so got some good stuff in here. Uh, here, uh, in Luke 12 45, he talks about uh, it is it, it, meth, Methuo is radically condemned, Methuskaste is ruled out by eschatological possession and eschatological certainty. So, we got to be certain of that, but it is also ruled out because the early Christian is filled with the spirit. So we're getting rid of all this drunkenness, all this living in the night and all of that stuff. So Paul censures the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 11 and 21. He was admonishing them. They destroy the fellowship of the Lord's Supper. We saw that. They come in, they're eating. They're eating the stuff that the poor should eat, and they're drinking. They're coming in drunk. So the, the rich separate themselves from the poor. Oh, man, that was a good one. And some are hungry, while others are swollen with excess and drunk with wine the important point here in opposition of the Dionysius cult, uh, which was well established at Corinth, there were a bunch of heathens over there in Corinth, is that intoxication and the Lord's Supper are incomparable. In contrast to this Dionysius cult, Methuen is not only no part of the celebration, it makes the Christian celebration impossible. So you can't be drunk and, and call yourself a Christian. So Dion, Dionysiac, whatever that is, intoxication and pneumatikos poma. Pneumatikos, that's uh, uh, poma. First Corinthians 10.4. Let's look at that quick. First Corinthians 10.4, I should know this word. I, well, we know what pneuma is. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 4, Numaticos. Uh, they all did drink of this same spiritual drink. There we go. Numaticos Poma. Okay, it's the first time I'm seeing that. I know I, I know this 4095, this the Pino, the drink. I didn't know Poma was there. And there's two words there, two verses, 41. This is how we study, one word at a time. Spiritual drink. Uh, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ, and he was in the wilderness with them. Uh, Hebrews 9.10, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and cardinal audiences opposed on them until the time of Reformation, and that uh, was nailed to the cross. Hebrews 9.10 was nailed to the cross. Um, so that was that one. Oh, I'll write that down later. Uh, irre irreconcilably opposed. So they're opposed. You can't do it. Hence, Peter in his, his Pentecost sermon must resist as strongly as possible any suspicion of drunkenness. And when he talked about that, he says, they ain't drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. 
Uh, if if the spiritually controlled speech of his disciples is unintelligible to unbelievers and gives the impression of intoxication, the power of the Spirit of God has nothing whatsoever to do with drunkenness, with new wine. And they were speaking in tongues, so there were some that didn't understand, but the people who should have understood them did understand them. So the fundamental difference between early Christian fullness of the spirit of the orgiastic enthusiasm of Hellenism is indicated in 518. We read that in Ephesians 518. The life and liturgy of Christians are not mocked by sensual ecstasy or bacchanatic frenzy, uh, but by infilling the spirit, okay, the distinction uh, could hardly be more succinctly expressed orgiastic enthusiasm on the one side and on the other side the fullness of the spirit which finds litur liturgical expression in praise and thanksgiving um, and practical expression of agape uh, in this respect paul emphasizes explicitly that the the fact that methusko is not a result of agosia Agnosia, oh, agnosia, as the Hermetic writings and follow suppose, but uh, asotia, uh, corrupt and profligate nature. So uh, agnoe, agnoeo is no knowledge, and asotia is no uh, no uh, wisdom. So uh, the two terms are used figuratively in Revelation. In 17.2, the inhabitants of the earth are accused of being drunk with wine of their huodoms and their idolatry. Uh, there can be no doubt that the Methuskathe is used symbolically here, though the vividness of the image is fully grasped only if we catch an allusion to the orgiastic nature of Hellenistic coats, coast, uh, cults. And that's what's happening. These people are drunk with, with <laughs> the wine of a fornication. They stand up there in the pulpits. Not only that, but the politicians I'm thinking of in my mind, they stand up there and they pontificate and they're all drunk. Methuo is unequivocally metaphorical in, in Revelation 17 and 6. Here in the familiar Septuagint uh, figure, the woman, the epitome of the demonic and ungodly world, is drunk with the blood of the saints and the blood of the witnesses of Jesus. So that was a little bit of the reading that I, uh, I could have got into, but uh, sometimes I, I bore myself when I'm reading, so I don't know what, what, uh, what you guys must be feeling. And it was something I wrote down that, uh, let's see if I can find it here. It was um, something about uh, being, okay. Uh, here, oh, it was in TWOT. 2381 um uh, okay this is talking about uh, getting sex having sex and 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 drunk during these these, these cultic things like like these guys do he says it was however not a sacramentalizing of sex and that's what they think they're doing when they're having these sex orgies and these things and they're praising so-called God, uh, but they're praising uh, Satan. So it's not a sacramentizing of sex, but an eroticizing of religion. <laughs> so they're not they're not doing it sacramentally. They're, they're, they're eroticizing the religion. I like that phrase. I wrote it down. T-W-O-T 2381. I want to see what word that was. I don't have it in front of me. Hold on. T O D W O T twenty three eighty one. What was I reading there? Twenty three eighty one. Excuse me while I do this. Twenty three seventy seven. Eighty one. The word is. Oh, that's the shak. Twenty three eighty one. So That's one of the words where I was looking at down here. Uh, one of these words, tw that's 2388, which 2381, oh man, okay, I don't want to lose you guys here, I'm just curious as to where, but well, the word I was looking at is shakab appears in it, to lie down in death or to lie down for sexual relations. Oh, that's the uh, copulation, uh, the coating, the couch. 
give me a verse. Give me a verse. Genesis 30 and 15. I just want to get this word and then we'll end it here. Genesis 30 and 15. I was I must have been looking up uh, coitus and, and all those other things there. There's a couple of words on copulation and comos and things like that. 3015. Uh, and he said unto her, Is it a small matter, matter that thou hast taken my husband and thou wouldst take away my son's mandrakes? And Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. He will lie with thee. Here it is, seven shakab. 2381 to lie. To lie. That's where I got it from. I don't know what it was doing on this page. Um, to lie, to lie down for sexual relations. Shakab is using the kind of sexual relations, those relations are illicit. There is no less true the word Shakab itself. In one instance, is used in legal statements that certain, forbid certain types of sexual liaisons. We'll get into all of this stuff when we're talking about lying down with each other and all that stuff. Living in sin, you know, uh, been there, done that. Uh, but that's where I got it from. Here we go. Here's the verse. Uh, perhaps one of the most degrading features of pagan religions is the way in which religious and sexual expression were often one and the same thing. It was, however, not a sacramentalizing of sex, but rather an eroticizing of religion. Yeah, you can see it with your own two eyes there. All right, good. Whew. Thank you, God, for everything. One word at a time, one verse at a time. That's all we do. We thank you for having the study. Thank you for these books. Thank you for your word. We love you. Give you all the praise and honor. We do everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Whew. Stop recording. Amen.